What can the foreign press in Israel learn from an acclaimed Clint Eastwood blockbuster? On January 15, 2009, U.S. Airways Captain Chesley Sullenberger became a national hero overnight after safely landing a bird-struck passenger jet on the Hudson River. All 155 people on board survived, most with only minor injuries, and the media soon dubbed the freak incident a miracle on the Hudson. Captain Sully and his crew had less than four minutes to save the lives of everyone on the plane. Still, his split-second decision to ditch the aircraft became the subject of scrutiny by authorities, with some even claiming he could have returned to LaGuardia or another nearby airport. In the 2016 film Sully, government investigators initially suggest that a pilot error was to blame for the loss of the aircraft. Why? Because simulations showed that a successful return or diversion was possible. However, during a dramatic interrogation near the movie's end, Tom Hanks makes a compelling argument in defense of the captain's actions. Can we get serious now? Captain? We've all heard about the computer simulations and now we are watching actual sims, but I can't quite believe you still have not taken into account the human factor. Human piloted simulations show that you could make it back to the airport. No, they don't. These pilots were not behaving like human beings, like people who are experiencing this for the first time. Well, they may not be reacting like you did. Immediately after the bird strike, they are turning back for the airport, just as in the computer sims, correct? That is correct. They obviously knew the turn and exactly what heading to fly. They did not run a check. They did not switch on the APU. They had all the same parameters that you faced. No one warned us. The human factor. Indeed, in an era where anyone can create computer-generated visual reconstructions, we must not ignore the human element. In recent months, popular media like the New York Times, the Washington Post, and Vice News have all published visual investigations that seek to smear Israel as being guilty of targeting innocent Palestinians during counterterrorism raids. But this so-called research often produced in collaboration with the anti-Israel collective forensic architecture, is divorced from real-world realities. Let's make one thing clear. The Israel Defense Forces do not target civilians, and the preservation of all human life is the Army's foremost concern. Accordingly, over 75% of Palestinians killed by Israeli forces this year were members of recognized terrorist groups or were neutralized as they carried out violent attacks. By contrast, during America's war in Iraq, combatants accounted for barely one-fourth of the casualties, revealing just how precise the IDF's military operations are. Yet that's not to say Israeli soldiers are machines. They're human beings. Unfortunately, in the fog of heavy combat, honest mistakes do happen. And when suspicions of wrongdoing arise, the military advocate general, whose position is independent from the chain of command, routinely examines these claims. So unless amateur investigators at news organizations in New York, Washington, and London are willing to factor in the human aspect, we suggest they leave the probe to military experts on the ground. Can we get serious now?